this writer really flexes here. He, he His line is, he's like, at what point on the graph do must and cannot meet? <laughs> it's him getting fancy. How do you calculate that? I wrote in my notes, Heath's version of a love poem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. You just F of X equals G of X. If they're like, yeah, you exactly. graph those two things. <laughs> Find the intersection the point. I don't know if you're referring to a love poem or how to calculate on a graph. Setting those functions equal to each other. On <laughs> the intersection points. That is romantic. It's a weird comment you made. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except when we don't. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. This is a fantastic piece of cinema. It really is. <laughs> I had so much fun with this. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bostic. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing, Noah. Back in my element. Yeah, right? So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Robot Monster. That's the title. Mm -hmm. And it's a poignant love story about a robot space gorilla mm -hmm. and a Nazi scientist and the Nazi scientist's best friend and his stepdaughter and his stepson. Yep. It's, uh, <laughs> yep. It's, uh, it was confusing to me, but, but also not confusing to me. Yeah. Clarifying in many ways. <laughs> right. Yeah, Freeing. that's the word. That's the word. Star crossed for. lovers. It was a lot like Romeo and Juliet, actually, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. In many ways, yeah. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the creature features of the 1950s, but you never really appreciated the subtlety and thoughtful plotting of the thing that rose from the dark and the skin eaters, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this movie. This is a movie that the 1950s looked at and said, Ah, oh, that fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, no, this is a great, like, if you love watching bad movies, if you got some friends over that want to watch a bad movie, this is a great selection. Turned 70 this year. It sure did. And I and Eli, I'm not complaining here because this was a goddamn delight, but why in the world did you pick this movie for us? Okay, so here's here was my thinking. Here was my thinking for those, because I, I got like 18 tweets that were like, huh? And I was like, hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> There's no good Christian New Year's Eve movies. We did one on like the second year of this podcast. And since then, Pure Flix has been like, I don't celebrate no years. And I'm like, oh, no, okay, that makes <laughs> sense. Classic reminder that the earth isn't the age you think it is. I can understand. So I was like, all right, New Year's Eve tradition established one of the old terrible movies from my old Blu-ray collection that I missed that will never otherwise fit into our show. New Year's Eve. Bam. Nailed it. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, if you wanted to sell me on an annual tradition, this was the way to do it. <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best, best sexual circuitry repair. Hell yeah. They, there's two characters that do that. They do some circuitry repair and every single time, everything they say is a sex thing and yes. it's <laughs> bananas. And they're like, just push the soldering iron a little further in right there. Can you lube it? Literally, that's a line. Can you, <laughs> Can lube, you it? lube it? Yeah. I, I think it's I think it was supposed to be loop, but yeah, we all heard lube. Yes. <laughs> you want to do a little solder me, right? <laughs> Come on. Well, the whole time the director thinks they're doing like the pottery scene from Ghost or whatever, and we're like, it's it's wires, man. It's wires and it's it's wires. Calm the fuck down. Also, like, there's no way to sexily solder. So in right. real life, it would just be like, <laughs> yep, well, I've destroyed that board by gently correcting. Caressing the entire thing <laughs> with the soldering iron. Listen, nobody really likes the soldering iron. You just put your mouth on the circuits. There you go. <laughs> Great. All right. So I'm uh, sorry to steal the easy one here, but best worst costume. Yeah. I mean, we'll get there and we'll stay there for a while. We'll live and swim and revel there like <laughs> Scrooge McDuck in his gold vault. But holy fucking shit, the monster costume in this thing is amazing. <laughs> If ever a costume said, no, of course this isn't the final thing. It's this <laughs> costume. <laughs> and I, of course, am going to take best worst sexual offering replacement. Sure. So I haven't seen this movie for a few years. 
And I made it about like 10, 20 minutes in. And I was like, oh, man, did I just choose like a cheesy creature feature? I feel like I'm not going to give any Noah and Heath anything to make jokes about. And then my best worst happened. And I was like, nope, this is the gem that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. To go this far back in time, we're going to need a minute to get up to 88 miles per hour, so we're going to pause for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the generational misogyny of Robot Monster. Dude, we're going to die. We're not going to die. We're going to go broke. Hey, hey, guys. What's all the hubbub? So Keith and I can't decide what our New Year's resolution should be. I want to eat healthier. Yeah, and I want to save money, but there's no way we can do both. Well, well why don't you guys just try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? First one of the year feels good. One to no, zero, just saying. Okay, excessive celebration. That's like a foul or something. With, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And if you're looking for an easy way to eat well and save money this year, you can cut back on expensive takeouts and deliveries and get started with HelloFresh. You'll love how fast, easy, and affordable it is to whip up restaurant-quality meals right in your own kitchen. I mean, that sounds delicious, Noah, but how's that going to help us eat healthy? With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals. Choose calorie-smart and carb-smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or adding proteins to a veggie dish. It's true. I was a HelloFresh customer even before they were a sponsor. I love learning new cooking techniques from the recipes, which is why I, Heath Enright, personally endorse it as a product. But where can we sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful21 and use the code Awful21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. So we go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful21 and use code Awful21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping? That's right. Well, looks like we can both have our New Year's resolution after all, Heath. Yeah, I guess it does. Oh, hey, uh, since that's just one, maybe you guys could also resolve to stop like calling back to jokes that I had to edit out to make to make my job easier? No, can do, buddy. I don't think I can promise to do that for this episode. Even. No. Okay. And that's what I said to her. What do you need to learn to drive a car for? The kids are at home. Exactly. Hey, fellas, what do you think? Uh, of what? My costume, you maroon. It's for our movie. Your costume for the movie called Robot Monster is a, a gorilla suit? I mean, sure. There's nothing more monstrous than a gorilla, is there? I, I mean, well, you know, they're large and all, but uh, they're not monsters. Well, I think they're pretty scary. Okay. I mean, even if they are scary, they're not robot monsters. Right. Ah, yeah. I thought you might say that, and that's why I brought this. Uh, a scuba helmet. Or is it a robot helmet? It's a scuba helmet. Well, Clearly. it could be a robot helmet. Mm. After all, when have you ever seen a gorilla in a scuba helmet? I mean, I I guess so. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's fine. Now, did you guys get my script notes about letting me carry that girl around some more? We, we got him. Yeah, we all got him. We all got him, Larry. Gonna carry her so fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. But before we get into the movie, I have... Like a fucking page and a half of notes about the opening <laughs> credits. Sure. So do <laughs> I. There's a guy in this movie named John Mylong. Yes. <laughs> nice. So, okay. So this movie, it starts off by crediting a stereo director and a stereo technician. That's where we are technologically. And then it says photographed in true stereo three dimension process. And at first I was like, what? A fucking black and white 3D picture? How do you do that? And then I realized. They mean sound. Yep. What? The sound is three-dimensional. <laughs> Did it used to be two and they invented that? To, Such it... flat microphones the first go around. <laughs> really couldn't stand at the wrong angle. Also, there's a credit for the billion bubble machine. Yes, the automatic billion bubble machine, which, by the way, we will see throughout this movie is the saddest. <laughs> the one I bought for my son for three dollars at Target and throw in the garbage every six weeks when it breaks because I don't want to change the batteries is so much better <laughs> than this fucking modern technological masterpiece that they had to get permission for in this fucking film that made it into the credits. Yeah, like maximum 
35 bubbles in the entire movie. <laughs> the billion bubble machine got a credit. Because in 1953, that thing took up a house. Yeah. Right? You had to feed it with cards that had bubble stuff on it or some <laughs> shit. No, the thing was as big as like a, a fucking curio cabinet. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> It's funny because a Skynet can make big bubbles, actually. Oh, yeah. oh nice. So and, and so and they're introducing the cast to us during these credits, right? They'll show the picture and, and, and tell us who that character is or whatever. But the music like assumes these people are the Legion of fucking doom. OK, right. So, so like imagine the Brady Bunch opening, but O Fortuna is playing, right? It's insane. So the music starts playing over the credits. And I was like, OK, the Sugar Plum Fairy is getting tortured to death okay. by <laughs> presumably a robot monster? That's what I I'm I had music note. Hey Steve, do you have any any music from that Christmas special about that baby who died still lying around? <laughs> yes. It's so weird. Like dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> dun -dun -dun -dun. Yes. <laughs> So and also by the way, these credits are over top of a, like a pile of comics that had a real hedge in our bets on which title we're going with feel to it, right? Because like one of them, one of the comics was called Robot Monster, but there was like five or six other possibilities. <laughs> so, but ultimately we open on a kid wearing a, like a homemade spaceman suit playing with this super annoying gun, this toy gun. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, can we start the movie with 40 seconds of the most irritating noise possible? Say no more, fam. Say no more. <laughs> yeah. No, look, if those are the toy guns that kids had when cops shot them, it's not because they thought they were real. Okay. Yeah. It's the, oh, Jesus. He's being aggressive with those 30 bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> So, but so he comes out of the woods in his little spaceman outfit. His little sister's there. And he's like, bang, I shot you. And she's like, good. Can we play something else? Because this is fucking dumb. <laughs> this sucks. I'm a woman in the 50s. You just saved me a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, we'll see a lot of it, too. But he's like, no, wander into the woods with me and play aliens. And she's like, fine, I'll wander into the woods. So the two of them come across this cave where there are a couple of strangers working, a couple of archaeologists, as it's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. And his opening line, the little kid, Johnny, goes like, bang, you're dead, to him, by way of introduction. Ah, the 50s. <laughs> Just going up to two grown men that you've never met and being like, bang, I shot you. We're out in the middle of nowhere together now. <laughs> it's insane. And then the adults are like, oh, don't worry, kids. Uh, we're... Nazi archaeologists, it'll be fine. And then they, one of them sits on his lap like Santa Claus. It's terrifying. Pulls the child onto his lap. Right. Uh, like, yeah, it's not the kid's idea. He's like, oh, come here, little Johnny, and sit on my lap. He's like, oh, oh okay, that's weird. Oh. It's got a German accent. It's not meant to be creepy, but it is. What an incredibly intimate thing you would do to a strange child a mere 70 years before this recording. Jesus. Also, like they're in this cave, so there's supposed to be like the the winds out of a cave sound in the background. Sounds like fucking banshee orgasm is going on just off camera. Yeah. But they explain that they're archaeologists and they found a cave painting. So the kid looks at the cave painting. We don't really see it. We just see a few lines, but he's like, oh, is that some kind of robot monster alien? And they're like, why the fuck would you say that? That no, it's obviously no. it's not that. I was dropping the title, you dumb fuck. Just do the next <laughs> one. <laughs> but just then, mom and his older sister, his like teenage sister, Alice, show up to find him. Yeah. And she says this weird thing. She's like, you promised to take a nap after lunch, you fucking liar. And like <laughs> to sort of play along with it, the archaeologist guy, the non-German sounding one is like, hey, little Johnny, don't worry. I had to take a nap after lunch until I was 21. Yeah. Do you guys take naps? I wish. Yeah, no, apparently that was a thing. I assumed if any of us took naps, it would be you. Back when I was a kid, we'd take a long nap after lunch. Then we'd wake up and mom would give us a few long cigarettes each. And we'd have a fun <laughs> afternoon. Quite the thing to run around with while you played with exploding sharp fire creating toy. <laughs> You're right. Palm all smooth. And I also love, too, there's this moment where, like, Basically, the, the mom and the, the older sister shows up and she and Johnny's just like, hey, there's an old one and a young one. I've, I found somebody for both of you guys to fuck. Right. <laughs> yeah. He immediately pimps off his family. Yeah. 
So they go back because they're, apparently they're out in this boulder field for a picnic, right? But the promise was that they were going to have the picnic and then everybody was going to take a nap together in some kind of a weird family unit sleeping ritual that yeah. we don't have anymore. <laughs> I guess by nap, they all mean like collapse right where you are. I can only assume they end their their picnic with, you know, an ether frolic. <laughs> Right. To our boober <laughs> listeners, was that a thing? Did you just go out in public and all sleep as a family unit under the sun? And then just <laughs> lose consciousness the minute you stopped eating? <laughs> we'd each eat a raw side of beef. It was pretty heavy. Yeah. And we'd all take a nap. <laughs> and then we'd have a phosphate soda. And some fried eggs. But yeah, and so now, of course, we learn in this little pre-nap picnic scene that Johnny's dad is dead. If he was alive, he'd have let me sit on that stranger Nazi archaeologist lab. And he's ready for mom to go ahead and start getting some new dick, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, you know what? I'll invite a Nazi scientist to be the dick. There you go. So that's the plot. Yeah. I think because the movie forgets what happens now. What's happening now, yeah. the movie forgot about entirely. It's going to get fucking weird here in a second. So, so everybody falls asleep, but Johnny fakes it, right? So he gets up once everybody else is asleep and he runs back to the cave. And when he gets to the cave, we have this ridiculous lightning bolt effect that I guess knocks Johnny unconscious. Could they not afford someone just wiggling their arm at him and going because I feel like that would have been better. If a cardboard cut out of a lightning bolt had slowly descended from above the camera and tapped him on the head, it would have been better. Yes. Just a guy in a black leotard carrying it across the screen. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so he falls unconscious. We see a sparkler descending from the heavens. And then we get a kind of a fucked up scene, which I should put up as a, like a content warning for anybody who might want to watch this along with us. Because this is we're, we watch like a scene where two lizards are fighting, where they've like coaxed an iguana and a baby crocodile into a fight. And very clearly the iguana gets killed or whatever the fuck that other lizard was. Yeah, right. And then they put like dinosaur little costumes onto those pets like a pug wearing a vest yeah that's the crazy thing about this scene they obviously fight their pet lizards to the death but then they also have claymation stegosauruses yes so even if you were going to use the excuse like well look it's the 1950s we need animal cruelty no you didn't you had footage of dinosaurs you just you were like out back staging a cockfight with your pet crocodiles and your boss walked in and you were like, this is for <laughs> robot monster. <laughs> really? Where are you going to put this footage? The beginning. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should also, I should clarify that Heath's right though. They, they did put a little like Spinosaurus costume on the baby crocodile. They did, yeah. Right? Like like they glued a little fan to the back. It's it's that very fucked up scene. But also, yeah, some claymation triceratopses, which was nice. So, okay, so Johnny wakes up. And at first I wrote, is he in some kind of ash cloud or bug swarm or what? But no, he's in the billion bubble machine. And the, the, by the way, this is the most bubbles it'll ever crank out. And like Keith teased, it's about 12. It's yeah, no, about it's, 12. Yeah. <laughs> it's certainly not in the triple digits. <laughs> yeah. You have to pay extra to get a billion bubbles worth of bubble fluid. The, but they, the machine yeah. Yeah. is what they have. Well, that's over the lifetime of the machine. You can get one billion and one bubbles. So, yeah, they don't all come out at once. <laughs> so, anyway, so Johnny wakes up and he's like, oh, I better, I don't know, fucking butter these cave walls. I have no idea what it is he's trying to do. But then there's <laughs> another lightning flash. and he, So he runs and he hides behind a rock nearby. Yeah, you know, like, hit me with lightning once, shame on you, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so, and this is where we're going to get the first look at our antagonist, Roman, <laughs> the rotund <laughs> space gorilla. <laughs> so, I forgot how fat the gorilla suit is. Oh, my God. Uh, you remember the gorilla suit, but you're always in your head. You're like, you're exaggerating how fat the gorillas but the gorilla suit is real he's a quite a full body <laughs> look i i don't want to fucking fat shame a robot space gorilla right uh, like obviously but like this what do we always say noah this <laughs> right no <laughs> this costume is it's shaped like grimace 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's just ridiculous. It's huge and it's all ass. And the guy doesn't fit in it. Like the guy inside, like, like if this was a fat guy, I'd be like, oh, okay, they had a fat guy who was, but no, there's a very clearly a skinny guy because whenever he walks, this giant hoving fucking yes. dome bounces back and forth swinging. on his normal human sized body. <laughs> So he so he looks like he walks like he's thick too like he like he knows what he's got going on. Yeah, exactly. So but now it's not just an enormously fat gorilla. It's also got a fucking scuba helmet with two antennas sticking out of it. Mm-hmm. So it's space, right? Yeah. Okay, so they were like we need to make an alien from space gorilla and somebody's like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'll write down gorilla scuba helmet and that's and they were done and that's what they well, I think what happened is they were going to go with gorilla and then somebody was like hey 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 guys how would a space gorilla breathe on earth and they're like right he would need <laughs> no no so um, it's it's a <laughs> sorry yeah Right. No, it would be antennas on top of the, the scuba helmet. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thanks, thanks for that correction, because I would hate for our movie to look bad. And now oh, you've dumb. made sure. That's just what it would have looked yeah. stupid. Like, People will take this science. movie very seriously now. <laughs> Should we do something <laughs> sexual with that? We'll get to that. We'll get to no, that. We're, no, don't no, worry. We're going. We'll, no, don't worry. You're, I know. You're, we're all wondering, when are we going to fill in the space gorilla's sexuality? Soon. And I'm, I'm happy to promise you it's the last 25 minutes of the film. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so he but so he walks out. The kid's hiding off to the side. Roman, the space gorilla, turns on his like space TV. We see like some asteroids for a minute. This is apparently a loading screen or like a <laughs> screensaver. But eventually, he gets his boss on the line, another helmeted space gorilla, mm-hmm. and explains to us that he's just destroyed all of Earth except for eight people. Right, except he didn't really do that. So he got lucky. Like the plan is that space gorillas are taking over Earth. This guy went down there and he's explaining to the boss. He's like, yeah, so I'm getting ready to take over the whole planet like you told me to. Then they all nuke each other. It was like a big freebie. So there's still eight left, though. I love that he had to in their own movie. He had to intervene and be like, no, no, that is me. I please stop genociding each other because I'm here to genocide. This is an overtime union thing. We want your cities still. We just don't want you in them. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he has a cosmic ray, which they call the calcinator ray. And that's what he's killing all of the humans with. And the way they get this effect, by the way, is so fucking stupid. They'll just like flash to like negative film for a second here and there. And there will be a sound. That's the calcinator ray. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a lot of it. (laughs) Yeah, the calcinator get ray gets more and more vague. Like this, this is the clearest they get about what the calcinator ray is. By the end, the gorilla might as well just shrug his shoulders and be like, you know, nah, calcium. calcium. <laughs> yeah, calcinator. <laughs> oh, and now also we should clarify that he didn't just kill the humans. He says to his boss at this point, there is no life left above the level of Lepidoptera. That's, that's that's fucking butterfly. So he nonsense. wiped out the weasels and the mice and the <laughs> fish. <laughs> also, that's an order. So it doesn't even you. How do you rank? What ranking system are they even <laughs> alluding to there? Doesn't make any. Well, sense. you so got to set your calcium ray very specifically. <laughs> it's a whole. I don't know if you're familiar. Also. It's weird that he has to do cleanup on the eight people left alive, right? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know what the monkeys are planning to do with the planet, but I feel like having eight humans just wandering around can't possibly affect that plan that much. I also feel like, it, you know, once you knock out like the first, you know, 5.9999999 billion people or whatever, like they could send somebody else to do the remaining eight, <laughs> couldn't they? Yeah, maybe a janitor. No, but the boss is like, clean plate award or no? <laughs> Do you want it? <laughs> find those last eight. So, yeah, so he's like, go out and find those eight people and kill them. And he's like, yes, sir, we'll do. He hangs up his phone and he goes back into his cave, I guess, to check and see if there's still like back there somewhere. Take a shit. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. So then, so Johnny runs off and then... Oh, boy, I looked up a bunch of plot synopses to see what the fuck was going on. Right. So what ha- there's a time cut here that the movie doesn't tell us about. And not only does the movie not tell us about the time cut, but the time cut cuts from one time of Johnny running away from that cave, having seen the alien to a different time of Johnny running from that cave, having seen an alien. Yeah. 
That's what's <laughs> happening here. It takes me. It took me a minute. <laughs> but apparently a bunch of time has passed. Mom is now married to the professor. And Johnny is coming back from wandering outside the safe zone where they're masked from the aliens detector rays. And everybody has memento disease. They're just trying to confuse you here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, we will, I might as well just say it up front, but we will eventually learn that this is Johnny's dream. You know, this is before that was too cliche to still use. And that's why, like, nothing makes any fucking sense. But, like, it was, it was awful nice of them to let us figure that out on our own. I feel like nothing about this movie made fucking sense. And they were sitting there in one of those quiet, we done fucked up creative meetings that we've all been in. And someone was just like, <laughs> It could be the kid's Fuck dream. It. it could be the kid's dream. <laughs> yeah, you guys right, want to do right. the dream? So, yeah. So, but the kid explains to the professor that he saw Roman, the, the robot monster, or Chowbacca, as I've got him uh, in my notes. <laughs> Fantastic. Down by the cave. And apparently he's setting up camp there for his, like, mission to kill the remaining eight humans. This is kind of fucking. First of all, it's a good thing they're all grouped together, and he isn't like, "Oh God, one's in California and the other one's in Kathmandu." Shit, right? I gotta get a <laughs> a bus. I blew up all the buses. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe I could ride a fish. No, damn. <laughs> How many butterflies? It's gonna take a lot of butterflies to carry me. I am a big boy. So, okay, and then the kid, I love this. The kid says to the professor, he's like, maybe we could kill him, huh, Pop? But he delivers it like they, he was asking if they could stop by the malt shop on the way home or something, right? <laughs> oh, what do you say, Pop? Maybe we could get some baseball cards and fight back as a race against our alien oppressors <laughs> and get a new tire for my bicycle. <laughs> also, I feel like they're all calling him dad too quickly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this yeah. is still like first name territory, especially with a Nazi scientist. Yeah, I feel like he's still Joseph or whatever. <laughs> so, but dad points out, he's like, look, Johnny, the, all the armies of the world couldn't take down Roman. What makes you think we could? And Alice, the older sister, is like, well, we could find his weak spot. That will never come back. Nope. Right. That line exists for its own sake. He has no weak spot. They'll never take him out. Mm -mm. They just felt like the sister needed to say something smart just then. What if we make him do cardio in the desert? <laughs> <laughs> they will, the director of this movie is pranking this actor and yeah. making him wear a gorilla suit all over the desert the whole time. What if we buy him shoes and ask him to tie them? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, and then this is where the sister also points out, she's like, you know, maybe we're not the only people alive. Maybe there are still some people on the space platform because we're so early in history that the idea of the, the term space station hadn't been sort of solidified as what that thing is called. Yeah, well, you would hang it on a couple of especially robust angels at this point yeah. with the game <laughs> Yeah, plan, right, so. 1953. <laughs> and then, so just as they're saying like, ooh, how could we get in touch with the space platform they get a call on their giant TV phone, but it's from Roman, the space gorilla. <laughs> they get a FaceTime <laughs> from the fat gorilla in a space helmet. Yeah. Which implies that like either they have been in constant communication with the destroyer of the earth or they are very casual about the genocide of all humanity just ringing them up. <laughs> well, also like they're the last remaining people on earth. Why do you have FaceTime? <laughs> right? Like, think about all the technology you'd have to dedicate to that. <laughs> so, but okay, but he's like, I, I have, you know, run my calculations and I know that there are only five of you left alive. I don't know where you are, damn it, but I know you're around here somewhere and I'm going to come kill you. But if you give yourselves up, I promise to kill you lightly. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be his whole promise throughout the rest of the movie is that if they give themselves up, he'll kill them much better than if he has to go find them. It will be a less painful death. Yeah. And they're constantly talking about negotiation. Right. So, like, that's that's what's happening. That's the power dynamic. And constantly these people are like, 
What if we, you know, use some of our bargaining chips? What bargaining chips? We have nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. What, uh, if he, I'll tell you what, I'll tell him that I'll pretend it hurts even if it doesn't. <laughs> and that'll really fuck up his offer. I won't ruin it for him. Maybe orgasm to death is a different, is a real thing. We don't know. The aliens have all kinds of types. Let's hold, let's see what else is in Outfits. There. Change the meeting location. <laughs> Now, so also, so we sneak in just in case you weren't confused enough. We sneak into this portion of the movie. The fact that Roy, who was the younger of the two archaeologists, was dating Alice. But the two of them broke up so hard that he left the protected buffer zone where the alien couldn't detect them. See, and my friends, this is the difference between a bad movie and a great bad movie, right? There's lots of bad movies of, oh, we're the last humans left on Earth and we're getting FaceTimed by the evil aliens. However, will we fight back? But it takes Robot Monster to be like, wait, wait, let's catch everyone up on the breakups and makeups <laughs> yeah. of the cast so far. <laughs> yeah, they tell us very specifically about that messy breakup. Roy apparently wouldn't admit that Alice was good in her field yes. of science, I guess. So he stormed out angrily of the electric invisibility fort that saves his life from the genocidal aliens. Yeah, of the only protection left for humanity. Yeah. And by the way, while they're filling us in on that, like, Roman is still on the line, right? Yes, he's, he's, like, he's on the phone going just like, guys, I'm right fucking here. Would I'm you really like me to leave? <laughs> I feel... I just killed most of living things on this planet. <laughs> and this is being a real yikes a Rooney, if you know what I mean. You guys are reenacting a messy breakup. It's like meta. It's really bad. And also, so, and then he's like, hey, like, you know, just so that we can get back on track, I have some video here that I took of me destroying your entire species. So he plays us this video. And at first, we get a couple of mushroom clouds, but then we just get an aerial shot of a neighborhood. With that silly negative film effect and the zzz, zzz, and we're and we're supposed to be like, oh, but all those people in those houses died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so just to be clear, after the aliens conquer Earth, they're gonna show their fucking vacation slides to the remaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, the, and this is the Eiffel Tower blowing up. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> So, okay, so he hangs up. Mom and the professor walk off to discuss, as Heath was saying, like, you know, the negotiation strategy. You know, like, maybe we could talk him into just cutting off our legs or whatever the fuck they think they can do here. <laughs> and then we cut back over to the cave, right? Roman is retiring for the night. He's done with his phone call. And as he retreats into the cave, we see Roy, who's all vagabondy and, and torn shirted, sneaking up on his equipment like he's going to sabotage it. Okay, so to be clear, he pretended that Alice was bad in her field to cover for his heroic plan by staging a messy breakup so that the rest Ooh. of the family wouldn't know that he's going to do the hero thing? I don't think so because he's not going to do a hero thing, right? He's going to like walk up to the billion bubble machine, accidentally hit the make a loud noise button and then run away. <laughs> yeah, run away yelping. <laughs> yes. But I love that. Well, that's Heath, a classic heroic ring and run thing, right? <laughs> That makes so much more Bag sense. Bag of shit right in front of the cave. Because <laughs> I was wondering what the fuck that beginning was for. But if it's a plot that does, that makes more sense than him just being like, ow, hot. Okay, uh, guys, my plan of pushing one button and then running away screaming didn't work out. Right. Yeah, because he goes right back to them afterwards. But yeah, what, what, so so he runs off. He also hides behind a rock. Luckily for the characters in this movie, Roman never thinks of walk all the way out of the cave and then look both left and right. <laughs> no, mm -mm. no. He's a Metal Gear, Gear Solid guard yeah, who turns right exactly. around. Exactly, right. And, and like Roy's out there just like with a newspaper and whistling, so it's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> well, that can't be a human. That's a newspaper. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So he calls his boss again on the space phone and he's like, look, man, I'm... I'm at my fucking wit's end. The calcinator ray is not working. I just, I don't know what else to do. And the boss is like, dude, you're a giant fucking monkey. Just just punch them in the head or something until they're dead. <laughs> and Roman, Roman's like offended by that suggestion. He's like, yuck. What do you mean punch <laughs> him in the head? I can't, you can't go from fucking sea, you know, 
multi-kingdom destroying death ray to punching someone. To- you come down here and punch him to death. I am a scientist. Do you know how good I am in my field? I would like you to say right now how good you think I am in my field of space gorilla science. <laughs> All right. Well, the plot hasn't changed or advanced in any meaningful way, but they've at least restated it. And I think that's about as much as we can expect. So we're going to take another quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more Robot Monster. And no matter what I say, don't open the door. Got it. Hey, guys. Why why are you locking Eli in our hobgoblin vault? It's my New Year's resolution. To eat fewer people using their dreams? No, I am still very much doing that. No, I want to read more. And I figure if Heath locks me in the Hobgoblin vault an hour or two a night, I'll be all set. Well, you know, Eli, if you want to get caught up on your reading, why not try a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds? How are wireless earbuds going to help me catch up on my reading, Noah? Well, with audiobooks, podcasts, and more, Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are so comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. Plus, Raycon gives you eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery life so you can fit more reading into your life on the go. It's true. Raycon sent us a pair to try, and I love their tap functions to let me stop and start what I'm listening to while keeping my phone in my pocket. Plus, They come with awareness mode, so I can listen while keeping aware of what's going on around me. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I get some Raycons? Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, Heath, looks like the vault is all yours. Wait, so I'm sorry, what is Heath using the vault for? Oh, he just, he just likes the alone time. Uh, That that tracks. I like to practice my kicks. (laughs) Roddy? (laughs) I know karate. Yeah. Listen to reason, Roman. Surely there is a way we can negotiate. I will only negotiate with the one, Heath and Wright. I find him desirous. Nice, Heath. Go do the... Hmm? What did he say? What happened? He says he'll meet with you to, like, maybe spare us. I assure you my sex tentacles are plenty sharp. Ah. Seriously? He he wiped out the entire planet. I know, I know, I know. I just, I mean, do you think he wants to? Dude, what does it matter what he wants to do? He's going to kill us if you don't go. Okay, well, statistically, I'm like 20% of remaining humans, so that's a pretty big sacrifice. Are you serious right now? What? You go, Mr. Save Humanity. You do it. I do not desire the bearded one. He smells like a JCC locker room. Yeah. Yeah, got me there. He does. Nice. I knew this was a blessing, not a curse. Stupid Old Spice. (laughs) And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action at the bunker with the professor waking up uh, from the bed that he shares with mom, Johnny, and Carla. Nice. uh, The little boy and the little girl. Again, this is the boy's dream, (laughs) right? That's Jesus. This is less sexually problematic than like the rest of the movie, though, to be clear. Okay. Yep, yeah, no, to be clear, this is the beginning of the sexual problems. And speaking of it being the little boy's dream, he now pulls out a gun. And when someone explains, well, you know, the, the atomic guns don't work on Roman, he explains, no, no, no. It's so that he can kill himself before Roman can kill him. Sorry, just real quick. I want to be yeah. clear. You made an atomic gun for us to kill ourselves because <laughs> we would need that as opposed to anything else. We want, we want to kill the shit out of ourselves. I mean, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and not only that, by the way, he sleeps with his atomic gun under the pillow. Yep. Right. <laughs> On a bed that he shares with two young children. <laughs> Listen, I keep the uranium locked in a safe. It's fine. <laughs> I want to be able to murder my family at a moment's notice. All gun owners from now until the infinite I like future. killing atomic deer. It's part of my <laughs> hobby. <laughs> what if I was starving and there was a was a small island nation that had been brought up in isolation was the only way to eat. <laughs> okay, so and and then Roy shows up, right? He he's like, I'm back from the the big breakup, and 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 I also now know where the robot monster is. Although 
you guys also know that now, so I guess I've served no real purpose. Uh, I really wanted a messy fight to break out right away, just as soon as he walks back in. I am great in my field, just so you know, <laughs> now that you're back. You almost get your wish. <laughs> oh, you ruined my uh, streak of everyone knowing how great I am in my field. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they immediately start to fight. Yeah. But before they fight, we should clarify the the quote unquote uh, like MacGuffin of this movie. It turns out the reason that they cannot be seen by the alien monkey is because they are all injected with the super antibiotic that German science professor invented. To be clear, the Nazi scientist invented bubblegum medicine <laughs> that's a vaccine against the death ray from the space gorilla. That turns out to be a vaccine against carthoid death rays. Yeah. Yes. Yep. In addition to curing all diseases, even viral ones, this antibiotic also makes you <laughs> immune to his laser ray. I was just so, I love this movie. I was so happy at this moment. I was like, this is the plot now. This is my life. This is fantastic. <laughs> and let's keep in mind that this guy was an archaeologist. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So just uh, what we're saying is next time you're about to get mad at your dad for not taking the vaccine, just keep in mind that like this is what sci-fi was when he was a kid. Okay, yeah. this, We've come a really long way. The Nazi archaeologist is an antibiotic virologist on the side. So, yes, yeah. exactly. That's his hobby. That's the plot. But. Not only are the, the people so far in the movie immune to the death ray, but it turns out that dad also injected two astronauts with the super serum. And they are also invisible. And there's a whole army garrison on the space platform orbiting Earth that are unaffected by this invasion. Right. So there's hope after all. They have a space plane. Roy says they're going to take it in two days and they're going to inject all of the garrison with the super serum and then there will be an army that can fight Roman. Right. But in order to do that, they need to communicate to the garrison that the two astronauts are coming and if they want to do that, they have to fix their FaceTime machine. Sexual circuitry. They're going to have to sexually solder the yeah. shit out of yep. that thing. <laughs> yes. Good thing Alice is amazing in her field, fucking Roy. Yeah, that's that's her thing. That's her field. And this is where they start fighting. He's like, oh, you're so bossy. And she's like, you're so bossy. And he says, I would, I would like to say this quote now from the movie, real quote, <laughs> you're so bossy, you should be milked. Yep. Before you come home at night. Yes. Yeah. You should <laughs> be a, he's even got a time figured out for this. Yes. So like. I thought about this for a while. Yep. This was most of my day. So did I. Are cows bossy is my first question. Is that no? <laughs> is there a known stereotype that cows <laughs> or milk producing animals that get milked are bossy? I believe bossy is a common cow's name is what they're going for. But um, it also could. That's the could be a stereotype. That's they, the like, they had a of lot cow. of there was a lot of racism in the 50s. I don't know about maybe they had cow racism. <laughs> they I had don't. cow racism. <laughs> there's there's my cows. That's bossy right there. That's yeah. uppity the cow. There you go. That's <laughs> Weird. Don't even get me started on what I call the stairs. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, OK. So we, we cut over to them. They're working on electronics, right? That we get to Heath's best worst. And the opening line, and I challenge you, listener, to watch this scene and think of anything else. The opening line of this scene is, don't you have to lube it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what we're watching is a penis-shaped object getting smushed into the area that they're working on. Yep. Right. That's what's happening. Oh, fuck it. Roy says to her at this point, he goes, you know, you're too beautiful to be this smart or too smart to be this beautiful. And she's like, oh, that's a compliment. And I take it as such. <laughs> oh, 1950s. Oh, that's my a God. Weird compliment. Say it's like a deconstructed compliment club <laughs> layer thing. And, and so they and they have to establish that she's electronicing as hard as she can. So they keep like cutting away from this to her going like, oh, I can't even feel my hands from all the soldering. And then they'll go back to some more sexual soldering. Wait, I'm sorry. You soldered so hard your hands are numb. We don't know what any of this shit is, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the bends from all the solder. <laughs> so she might as well be like, I've got the black lung pop. <laughs> <laughs> 
But like everything else in this stupid fucking movie, it turns out not to matter, right? We spent all this time on her sexually soldering with Roy or whatever. And then they're like, oh, by the way, that that rocket took off like an hour and a half ago. So it's way too late. Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> so and so just then Roman calls him to tell him that he knows all about <laughs> the two space pilots. OK, right? hello, it's me <laughs> again. These Skype calls are my fucking favorite. So. He calls him like he can just like immediately patch into their Skype and be talking. Sure. So presumably Roman called a bunch when they weren't standing right there. And this like alien overlord had to be like, ah. <laughs> all right, what am I play Wordle? I'll do the Wordle. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'd like to show you what I saw. And then he shows video of the rocket taken off. I'm like, weird that you would have a camera there. And then we get some just fucking stellar 1953 special effects. Like, this is w whatever the next step up from a little kid holding a space plane going, pew, 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 pew. So here's what I think <laughs> happened. I think someone bought a sparkler without ever having lit a sparkler <laughs> and was just like, oh, this, show, this is a little uh, dangerous. <laughs> they give these to kids? That's crazy. Because it's just someone waving a sparkler kind of with a plastic plane in the front of it. Yeah. But very uncut. The shot never lasts more than a second and a half. Oh, they try for an explosion and they miss. I know yep. the explosion <laughs> is just sort of falling <laughs> off the fucking frame. <laughs> and so I'm like, I wrote my notes. I'm like, did they not have explosions back then? They had World <laughs> War II. I feel like they had explosions back then. I know it's stock footage, but I feel like somebody hurt themselves making yeah. this <laughs> somehow still. Like, I don't know what the bargain basement version of stock footage was in 1953, but they well, found now it. you they do. Found, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we found this war photographer's camera who died and we're going to use his footage. Brown versus the board ad is next year. <laughs> And well, and also like so, it, so that we don't get all the way through this without giving you a clear idea of the kind of terrible old timey sci fi writing that we get. The alien says to him at the end of this call, he's like, "By your clock time, you have one hour until I seek you out." Sorry, there's so much there. Clock time versus <laughs> what? Also, what is Roman going to do for an hour? Why right. did he just... He didn't finish the Wordle yet. He's still working on that. <laughs> I'm going to watch two episodes of Everybody Loves Raymond and make some ramen noodles. With the commercials. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. So the call ends and the little girl, Clara, who we're all like, oh, yeah, fuck. I forgot about her. She goes, hey, mom. Why doesn't he like the humans? And and they're like, mm, I guess we should really explore that before. Nah, no, that won't matter. No, nah, we matter. have a Nazi scientist here. It, let's not get into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did, did someone say kill ourselves? Kill ourselves? Anybody? Uh... Anybody with an atomic gun nearby? <laughs> what, would, would you look at this? And again, they, they explore the idea of negotiating. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, we'll stop if you stop genociding the earth down to eight people. Don't finish it off. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, we haven't killed any of you yet. So yeah, we'll right, continue right. not. We Meet are, us here we'll call the... it even. You want some bubblegum medicine? <laughs> so, okay. So then we, we, we cut back to Roy mansplaining electronics to Alice some more. Right. We get a little bit more sexual soldering. Yep. Meanwhile, and apparently this is so that the professor can call Roman and do the negotiations. Right. And do it. It's the best. He's like, hey, Roman, uh, I believe we're at an impasse now. And Roman's like, no, I'm, I'm clearly winning. That that doesn't make any sense. I'm way up. <laughs> you haven't even scored yet. And the professor, I guess his plan is to be like, what are you scared of an old lady? Psh, wuss, you fucking wuss. Bunch of fucking wusses. So he introduces. How about I introduce you yes. to right. my family? To your murder victims. Yep. Genocidal alien who has killed a trillion people. Yeah. Let me start low. Start with the less impressive one. That's Martha. She kind of sucks. I uh, completely understand if you want to keep with the killing plan until you meet the others. No, do the next one. What's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> well, but so, but here's the thing too. He, when he introduces Martha, the the mom, he says, "This is Martha, my companion for the last twenty three years." But we we saw when they met earlier in the movie, 
and the kid is still the same age, right? So again, like the movie is like desperately fucking with us at this point. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he, so he says Martha and then we watch Roman look at Martha <laughs> and then Nazi scientist is like, Nothing? Yeah, okay, that's fair. This is Alice, my attractive stepdaughter. What about this? This is one of your She's victims. pretty hot. Huh? Didn't want to play this card. What kind of wanted to see what I could get with the Okay, old moving on. This is Johnny, my son. He he sucks. You look at the size of his tongue. <laughs> and then Johnny antagonizes the alien. He sticks his tongue out at the alien. Yeah. yeah right. right. And Roman's like, yeah, he does suck. Back to Alice, please. What what's um what's what's her deal? What what is Alice? Yes. Is she like in her field or yeah i want to be clear i want to be clear he is not joking roman the conquering genocidal alien goes put alice back on the put phone alice back. <laughs> yeah tell her i have a podcast or something no he basically says ass pics please yeah right <laughs> right he's like no i don't want to talk I, well you know what i do want to talk to alice alone i want to have a little alone time <laughs> roman is like it's like when you see a hot person on, on Instagram and you're like, oh, I'm going to check the bio for the OnlyFans, but then they're just a hot person and you're like, that's fine. They're allowed to just be hot. You are. <laughs> you assumed that another, that's, everyone can do whatever they want or not. Right. But then a Nazi scientist jumps into the OnlyFans and is like, no, you'll meet with me now. Because that's, that's <laughs> the dad's like, no, you're not meeting with Alice yeah. in person to talk about your podcast or whatever. You can meet with me. I'm the main human scientist. And again, yes. Roman is like, nope, not you. No, please. No, just Alice. But go Alice. back to Alice. I just said Alice only. I really wanted Nazi scientists to try and like zhuzh it up. Like, oh, uh, what if I told you I could fit my fist in my mouth, Roman? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. A man. Show me for a second. Show me just the beginning of that. <laughs> a man can do for a monkey what a woman <laughs> never dream of. Well, and, and so, it, it, and then he, finally they agree that he can meet with Alice. And he's like, you know, where do you want to meet? And keep in mind that he doesn't know, at least as far as the movie has, has, has led us to believe at this point, where on earth these people are, right? But he's like, okay, so you know the spot where the two dry rivers meet? <laughs> and they're like, oh, that's what? spot on earth. Yeah, yes. of course, the old <laughs> Near the mountain. river bed, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, th that's where they're going to meet, apparently. So they hang up. The whole family immediately starts trying to talk Alice out of going. You are not going on a date with a genocidal space gorilla. So like that's the argument <laughs> they're in. And yes, she's like, yeah. I, I am though to save humanity. So right. I'm doing that. And the professor is like, <laughs> Roy, mansplain this to her. I, it's, I'm getting nowhere, you know. Right. And he's like, I don't know if saving humanity with a date is ladylike. And I <laughs> forbid you. Yeah. She starts to leave and Roy just picks her up, drags her away, and ties her to the wall. Yep. Ties her to the wall. No, but literally that. Jesus, yes. the 50s. Holy fuck. To be clear, the message of this movie at this point is, look, if humanity has to die, humanity has to die. Don't let your daughter get fucked by a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Roy actually does the blocking in the hallway thing, like the bully yeah. in high school for a second. <laughs> yeah. But now imagine the bully is like, okay, I'm going to grab you and tie you up in a weird dominant sexual scenario right after that. Well, and then later, fuck you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I've actually imagined that quite a bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. I gave a confusing Way example. Ahead of you, buddy. <laughs> uh, just don't imagine anything I just said. Just skip it. That's better. Too late. So, okay, but so during all this tying up commotion, though, Johnny sneaks away to the spot where the two dry riverbeds meet. Okay, okay. so <laughs> in my we head, all I, was agree. Like, I was like, Johnny's going to go fuck the space gorilla instead the of exact, Thank you, Heath. We all had the exact same thought of Johnny showing up and being like, what's up, motherfucker? Yeah. I can do anything <laughs> Alice can do and more. <laughs> so, I'll make your nightmares come true. <laughs> Forget your dreams. And then we get my absolute favorite aspect of this entire movie, which is how many times they made this poor man in this chunky ass gorilla suit walk <laughs> uphill in the fucking <laughs> desert. Through he's, the desert. He's going to dry riverbeds. There's no reason for it to ever be uphill. But every time we see him, he's fucking hiking up a slope. He's so mad. <laughs> Guys, come, how much footage do you need? 
Little bit more, man. It's so <laughs> hot in here. The whole movie is revenge against this actor for something. Right? That's mm -hmm. the whole purpose of making this. Can we just have her meet at my place instead? Why? Ugh. All right. It's so hot. <laughs> Why is there no water at Crafty? <laughs> is this lemon juice? So meanwhile, back at the bunker, the professor realizes that Johnny is missing. And he's like, Roy, untie Alice. You guys have to go look for Johnny quick before he fucks the space monkey. Right. Right. Let's be clear. The monkey never said he was going to fuck Alice. So it is definitely a reach to be like, great, now he's going to fuck Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was already a weird sexist reach to be. He's like, no, trust me, once a, once a space monkey gets his mind to sex, there's no chance. <laughs> Johnny is as good as plowed. This is an easy bait and switch. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then he says, so he sends them off and he's like, hey, if Johnny comes back, I'll set off a flare. Wait, they're, they're still supposed to be keeping their fucking location a secret, but what? A, okay, fine. So they they go off. We watch more uphill walking. <laughs> so and it's much different. more. It's not even the same footage. They keep using yep. obviously different footage. <laughs> 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 so, but Johnny just follows the lightning effect, the negative film effect to find the meeting place. And eventually the two of them come uh, into contact. Right. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man. Why are you trying to wipe out humanity? And he's like, your species was getting too advanced and we wanted to preemptively wipe you out. And I'm like, oh, you know, today we call that the Bush Doctrine is the, um, <laughs> the terminology we use for that. You had weapons, atomic guns of mass destruction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, all right, well, I'm going to kill you with my flashy lights. And he doesn't. And Johnny insults him. And this is my new insult. As Eli is telling you, you're so bossy, you need to get milked on your way home from work or whatever, I'm going to tell people, well, you look like a pooped out pinwheel. <laughs> you look like a pooped out pinwheel. Is that what he pinwheel. says? Yep. Yes. <laughs> pooped out pinwheel. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, so like a pinwheel that, that is covered in, like that's like shit has hit the fan, like a spinning pinwheel and it's all covered up? Or it doesn't work anymore? I think, yeah, that's what he meant was that it doesn't work anymore. What I imagined was someone shitting a pinwheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I had somebody shitting into a moving pinwheel. Okay, we all had our own interpretations. Ooh. Oh, yeah. all right. All right. There you go. So, shitting into a moving pinwheel is an image. Vivid. <laughs> so th then there's this great moment. So Johnny's supposed to accidentally let it slip that they have the super serum, right? And then that's why he can't kill him with, their, with his calcinator ray. But the way they have to like they have to really dig into the idea that this guy came up with an experimental serum and then tested it on his family. Yeah. Right. Just like Fauci. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny even implies that like he had them drink or inject themselves with really serious diseases to make sure it worked. So it's not just like, oh, I came up with this thing and it turns out to have worked. He was like, no, no, he gave us a bunch of AIDS to drink and it still exactly. didn't get us. It's been great. Right. He says, and I quote, we don't even get sick when we swallow things with really bad bugs. In them. <laughs> okay. Th this dad is Dr. Mengele. Like literally, like we yes. were saying like, oh, Nazi side. No, he did literally Nazi experimentation shit. And they tell yeah. us that. Right. And Roman is like, aha, now I have enough information to calculate. <laughs> this is, again, a quote, to calculate the spectrum dust in the calcinator ray. <laughs> so now he can get him, apparently, is what yeah. that means. Don't worry. He instantly forgets about that. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So then we cut over to Roy and Alice. They're walking around looking for Johnny. Roy takes his shirt off at this point because <laughs> why not? You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the 1950s. Like, I was in pretty good shape for the 50s. Can we just say I was in pretty good shape? For the I could have been an action hero, 1953. Well, apparently furry was what they were going for back then, too. Yeah, so yeah. I'm furry? You yeah, go to absolutely. the gym, you use that, like, strappy thing that sands yeah, just down your love yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Sands your ass. Let me just say, I could have walked in and taken that I'm fucking good at that romance machine. part. Yeah. <laughs> so, me too. No audition. So anyway, so so he takes off his shirt. He looks at Alice. And he's like, are you going to? No? Okay. Never mind. Never mind. And then they see Roman coming. So he, he picks her up and runs away. 
<laughs> I feel like no matter how slow she is, the two of you running is faster than yeah. that, right? They both they do it for a little bit. They both realize like, all right, well that was that was dumb. And you just he's like, all right, I, whew, hot. carried you across the threshold or whatever. We could just both run now. You can you have run legs, <laughs> leg yeah. running, lady leg running. Can you do that? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Roman's over there fucking just leaning against trees. He's he vomiting. He's vomiting, but still. Yeah. He's just chonking his way along. Ugh. Yeah. Can I get a catering? Please. I just <laughs> want a catering. And also, he is shockingly easy to hide from. Yeah. They just, you know, hide under a bush. And it's like, well, he can't see us. We're safe. <laughs> so we cut back to the compound. Johnny is now returning home safely. And we have this like eight minute shot of him like trying to climb the wall to get into the cabin. It's really long. It's really <laughs> yeah. long. So long. And then he gets he gets into the compound thing and everybody's like, so like how did the date with the space gorilla go? And his exact first words are, I gave it all away. And I was like, what yeah. is happening? <laughs> oh, Pop, I gave him. Oh, they, he meant the information about the yes, serum. Okay. Pop, I gave him the old 360 Gawk Gawk 3000, just like you taught me. <laughs> like I was starting a fire in Boy Scouts, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, but he tells the professor that he accidentally blabbed about their secret weakness and the professor's super duper forgiving. He's like, oh, that's okay. What's done is done. I'd be like, man, I'd, I'd throw that kid over the wall and call Roman on the video <laughs> phone, but okay. <laughs> No, it's fine. It's not like you tried to go meet with a monkey who you weren't married to like that whore of a dog. <laughs> yeah, <mine>. right. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of which, we, we cut back to Roy and they're still hiding from Roman. And he's like, hey, do you want to kiss while we're while we're doing this? And she's like, no. And he's like, how about now? And she's like, no. And, she, and he's like, how about now? And she's like, no. And he's like, how about now? And she's like, yes. Well, uh, yeah. he Ah, the 50s. He, ah, the 50s. <laughs> it's like nine or 10. Like, oh, were you leaning in? No. Oh, no, you, you're saying... Very literally, no, I wasn't leaning in. Okay, good. Now, though, are you... And then finally, he's like, ha, I kissed your upper nose when you weren't looking. Now you have to do mouth. Now, we, <laughs> yeah, now, now you have you to have do... To now me. you have to fuck me. You know what they say. <laughs> You're a chewed piece of gum now. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. And we cut from them fucking to Roman blubbering his way back to the... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, how's it going, guys? <laughs> Look, I'm here to kill you and everything, but can I just get... Can we just call like a T.O.? I'm gonna lie on the ground. <laughs> you won't run, and I won't run. We just and I'm gonna pant the same amount for of distance, a solid eight end. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Somebody at least finally fucked somebody, so I guess we can take a break. But first, let me give it Act Three the hard sell. Will Roman ever actually do anything? Will Roy eventually use whatever washing machine is keeping Alice's clothes spotless? Will the movie ever remember the stakes it sets up from one scene to the next? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the inadequate conclusion of Robot Monster. Hey, podcast listener. You know, the average American thinks they have about $80 a month in subscriptions when actually it's closer to $200. Yeah, like our friend Noah here. He's got a lot of subscriptions that he forgot about. What? No, I don't. Mm. Really, Noah? You mean to be subscribed to Old Guy Coughs Quarterly? Thank you. Y yes, but lots of Good articles in there. Really? Sounds like someone needs rocket money. Yes, but what's rocket money? Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills all in one place. So you won't pay for Dusty Old Video Games Magazine a moment longer than you want to. D-O-B-G-M is an industry standard, okay? Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. It's true. I've been using Rocket Money to monitor my finances since they became a sponsor. I love how they provide a spending snapshot to help keep me on my budget, and they'll even give me a heads up if there's a large charge or a change to my credit score. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse it as a product. So stop throwing away your money, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. 
Rocket Money, because some of us don't need five Book of the Month Club memberships. Well, some of us do. You Philistines? Roman. Yes, Supreme Master. You have failed to execute five of the humans. They are immune to your cartoid ray. Indeed, Supreme Master. You must find and kill them by other means. But, uh, uh, what? Uh, what? What does that mean? I, I don't know, man. You're a super strong robot monster. Just, you know, kill them. With my hands? Ew. Oh, oh, what are you, squeamish now? You just killed the entire population of the planet. Well, yeah, but with the, with the Carthage laser, I didn't beat him to death with a wiffle ball bat. There's a pretty big difference. Elimination is elimination. It is your supreme purpose. No, elimination is not elimination. I'm going to get back to the space station and everybody's going to be like, oh, there goes XJ1. I heard he had to choke out the last five humans to death with his bare hands like it was fucking Game of Thrones. Fine, fine. You may use the atomic laser, but be quick about it. Yes, Supreme Leader. Did you watch Game of Thrones? I I, I quit about halfway through the third season. You should pick it back up. It gets good again. Right, but, but doesn't the ending suck? Oh, totally. Why do you think we're killing the humans? Oh, so that's why. Still worth a watch, though. I'm up, up. Put it on my iPad. Right. It's like a plane show. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Roy and Alice returning to the compound as Eli has it in the notes, all sticky dicked. Look, I didn't see a washcloth with them, so Only I assume one of them was sticky dicked. <laughs> they're sticky dicked. <laughs> I really wanted them to walk in and for the German guy to be like, wow, you guys smell like you just fucked. You guys just fuck. <laughs> And then I, when I wrote that joke in my notes, Alice immediately goes, have you been playing house? And I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah, right. Al the Harsh. little girl noticed the fucking smell. Yeah. There's cum in your hair. It smells like sex and candy. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the professor's like, wow, you guys sure have been gone long enough to um, fuck the shit out of each other. And, uh, and Roy's like, hey, apropos of that, we would like to get married. And figured since you're the only other man on earth you would do the ceremony and he's like well you know like you're the only people your age on earth it was bound to happen so sure sure somebody's got to transfer ownership yeah totally got it yeah <laughs> so meanwhile roman is having another zoom meeting with fucking roboss right he tells roboss about the serum <laughs> we, we watch him walk some more and then get back to his cave too and he's real angry about it. I wanted him to be out of breath the entire conversation. Right? He's like, <laughs> and then, oh, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> he just wheels an office chair out of the cave and sits in it. There we go. <laughs> oh, much better. But this is where he ultimately agrees that he will just have to beat the crap out of them to death. Yeah. I wanted his boss to be like, yeah, it's too late to give them Facebook. Um, that would sort of get rid of... They're antibiotic. This was such a weird conversation. He's like, hey, boss, okay, just, just try to stay with me here. Confusing turn of events. I thought I was going to be dating a lady. It was a kid. And then, well, it doesn't matter. I found out how to kill them all. So I did do my job. Well, but he didn't, though, right? Because he says, ah, the, ser the serum and, and, and everything, I can just recalibrate. And I was like, no, well, you're going to actually still have to beat the crap out of him to death because we wouldn't have a movie if you could just do the flashy thing. He's like, right. Right, beat the crap out of him to death. All right, all right. So killing the last humans with my bare hands is the game plan. <laughs> Still. Yeah, well, and then in this weird and desperate and stupid attempt to inject some kind of a ticking clock into this, the boss says, but hurry, the planet Earth has half revolved. You have but a short time to achieve our goal. What why, do that why possibly though? fucking mean? No, the butterflies are rising up. They've been, <laughs> they've been banding together with the grasshoppers and the mitochondria. They're going to strike yes. back. <laughs> well, Jeff Goldblum mitochondria being like, wait a second, cold, a cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So we cut back to the wedding, which Roy has opted to remain shirtless for. And I want to, I want to remind everybody that like Roman killed all the people. Not all the clothes. Yeah. There are like two and a half billion people's worth of wardrobes out there for the taking. He's still got that ripped up shirt and he's going to do his his fucking wedding topless. 
popped the shirt at the wedding. That's like Andrew Tate stuff right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrifying. <laughs> I mean, if he changed, everyone would smell his dick. So, you know, he's just keeping it contained. All right. Also, pants back then were so fucking high. Like, like how did they not realize that's not where the top of pants went? Yeah. (laughs) I get it. Have we evolved, like, as human species since the 50s? Like, our waist has moved and, like, our face shape is different now. Yeah. It seems like clearly we, we have a lot. Yeah. I mean, my waist has definitely moved and it hasn't (laughs) taken since the 50s to do it, Heath. (laughs) All right. So and then, by the way, the the professor, he's going to do their wedding, but he gets like super duper religious for the sake of the ceremony. Christian movies. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm super duper Christian in case it ever matters for any future podcast. <laughs> I'm also a Nazi mad scientist, but yeah, you're you're listening still. Yeah, okay, good, 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 good. That tracks. Yeah. He has this crazy moment where he's like, I understand that it's part of your plan that a a monkey in a diver's helmet killed everyone but us. But, <laughs> but us. <laughs> but maybe it's part of your plan that Alice and Roy live in the shell of humanity's existence. <laughs> You yeah. mysterious son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so they, they, they skip the I do's and all the vows. I guess that didn't matter when women didn't have autonomy. And then Johnny is like, so where are you guys going on your honeymoon? And Alice is like, fucking pound town is where we're going. I don't know. It's like we- <laughs> Johnny's like, you need a stripper. The other corner of this bunker. Yeah. It's- <laughs> <laughs> right. right, it's gonna get loud. <laughs> and if if you smell sticky dick later, that's when it's from. Just saying, <laughs> there will be no. Give me the atomic gun. <laughs> but they actually like leave. They they go on a honeymoon. They leave the safe compound. You know, with I guarantee you it's been more than an hour since he said they had an hour. <laughs> so with Roman on the loose, they're like, eh, yeah, but we can still go somewhere else to fuck, right? <laughs> they just walk out to a Howard Johnson's. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, okay, so we cut back to Roman just chunking his way out of the cave. I really wanted him to have like a really impractical weapon with him now that he has to kill them in like a <laughs> wiffle bat. Or an axe and just like, oh, God, this is, I really was hoping the rain would work. <laughs> just a handful of, like, pots and pans that he drops. Yes. <laughs> Come on. I have no idea what your fucking weapons look like. I, f- I found three kitchen knives. <laughs> These look pretty blunt. Too. And an extension cord. So heavy. <laughs> it's really hot. I'm so hot. Weren't there golf carts? Where are your golf carts? This is a nation. <laughs> Don't space gorillas have alopecia sometimes and just, I don't know, like shorts and a t-shirt? I feel like we could <laughs> relax the set. We can do whatever we want. So, so we cut back to Roy and Alice. They're, they're heading off to fuck. But Carla has followed behind him with flowers. She's like, I wanted to bring you flowers. And I'm like, okay, well, go go home. Try not to get killed by any you know giant space gorillas on the way. I'm like, I feel like you walk her back. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know how long this erection's going to last, kiddo. So we need to get out of here. <laughs> Another hour and a half and I've got to call my doctor and there are no right. doctors. And so, there's yeah. no, they're all dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, a guy named Roman, but. <laughs> so, oh, well done, sir. All right. So, but, you know, so she wanders off and oh shit, Chowbacca sees her. Right. So he grabs her and runs off. And this happens off camera, but to be clear, strangles her to death. Yes, he will later be like, yep, I strangled that little girl to death is the words that are written in the scripts of this 1953 film. And we'll find her body, right? Like, we'll watch people find her body later. Yeah. So he he abducts her and kills her. And again, keep in mind, this is her brother's dream. Yes. His bro- her brother's subconscious is like, and then a monkey would probably squeeze the life out. If, if Johnny doesn't spend the next 11 years in therapy after telling people about this dream, yeah. they've missed an opportunity. <laughs> so, Johnny Wayne Casey so- <laughs> tells us about his dream. So, okay, so we cut back to, to Roman and his cave, filing his fucking intergalactic TPS reports or whatever. Okay, so to be clear, he killed the little girl, and then he was like, ah, I'm pretty tired. I'm going to head back and yes. uh, deal with the rest <laughs> of this tomorrow. 
No, because you know when you have like a shitty boss who gives you like an unfair workload, so you do a little of it and you call him to be like, yeah, no, I did not get into cutting all the lemons, but I cut like six. That happens. <laughs> he actually does that phone call. He, call, yeah. he Skypes up the boss and he's like, hey, just do it a quick check-in because, you know, that's good to do, you know, productivity-wise. I killed a little girl. Eh, I feel like I'm going to call it for today. Just <laughs> get, get that well, in the boss. like, no, do not call it for today. You have to kill seven more people. Yeah, no, he even suggests that maybe we like lower the total number. He's like, what if we kept one as a pet? One can't reproduce, right? Uh, but Robos is having none of it. All the humans are not, right? So elsewhere, Roy and Alice are getting ready to fuck to just bizarrely militant music. Honey, let me put on something that I think you'll really enjoy. <laughs> Imperial March. Okay. What do you think? You think you can keep this rhythm up? A little reverse cowgirl? Forward, forward, back, back. So Roman shows up, he catches a mid four play, and and they run, which which should do the damn trick, right? Because this is a very hefty space gorilla. But they don't they, like they stop running and decide to fight back. They're like, oh, you know, I found a stick. And she's like, I found a stone. And, and, and they decide to try to break his bones, I guess. OK, they were just having sex, though. So Roy is fighting a space gorilla with a very visible erection. That's what we're yeah. right. Yeah, because like they didn't quite get. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it's peak awkward. Really wanted a sticky dick to turn out to be Roman's weakness. Right. He's just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> But also, they made this poor fucking actor now wrestle with two people in the desert in this <laughs> giant hairy ass costume. At one point, Roy, because again, you gotta remember, he's just this normal human in a grimace costume. So at one point, Roy sort of shakes the costume around him, and the actor has to be like, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> yes. It's spun around, stop. it's spun around. <laughs> 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 Time out. My legs are out of the leg holes now, man. <laughs> Push you off a cliff. Honestly, at this moment, I was like, if this turns into a threesome, I got to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. That would track Ooh. with this movie. Yeah. They're rolling and then laughing and rolling <laughs> yeah. on top of both of them. Roy kisses him right on the forehead and <laughs> well, once he gets like, the forehead, oh. endless yeah. love starts to play. All right. <laughs> I have to blow you now. So, okay, but but instead they fight. He grabs Roy by the throat, drops him off a cliff. We don't see him go off a cliff. We just hear him go, ah! Uh, I'm totally going off a cliff, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the alien grabs Alice and she does the classic, you know, I'm I'm being held by a monster leg kick thing, which is yes. like way more aerobic exercise than I realized it was before I saw this woman do it, right? More whimsical, too. There's a, <laughs> there's a real, like, hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She keeps it up for quite a while, though. So, okay. So he carries her off. We cut back to mom and dad. They're coming across Carla's dead body in the meadow now. Mom starts crying, and the professor's like immediately like, oh, give me a fucking break. This is the most underdeveloped character in the movie. Come on. Come on. Hush. He'll hear you. <laughs> so he grabs the body. They're, they're, they're solemnly heading home with it. And we cut back to Roman. Like carrying, they made him carry Alice for so long. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> hey, Chris, I, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't want to be a whiner or anything, but these couple of scenes where you've had me like walking up this mm -hmm. same hill like two times in a row, yeah, 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 it's been really hard on me. So, like, what what am I doing in this next scene? Uh, you're gonna carry a struggling woman for a while. God damn <laughs> up it! Up a hill, up a fucking hill. It's because I fucked your wife, isn't it? <laughs> well, and clearly yes. he's like the, the 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 condition was like okay, but I'm gonna have my hand like uh, way more on her boob than there's any reason for it to be the entire fucking time. And he's like, All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get those leggies. I'm gonna get a real uh, cop. I'm gonna cop <laughs> a real feel here. It's 1950. I guess you are. Yeah. So and then Alice like starts trying to seduce the robot space gorilla or make small talk. She's going like, wow, how are you so strong? And he's like, oh, well, you know, I actually have a personal strength fire that makes you super strong. I keep it back in my cave. And she's like, oh, I bet this will be like your weakness and it'll be really uh, important to the plot. And this is how we'll defeat you. He's like, nope, we are going to forget about it after this scene. If you can imagine that shit. No, it's a bubble machine. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so then we cut back to the professor, mom, and Johnny. They're burying Carla, you know, and Johnny sure wishes he'd played house with her back in act one. 
play with your sister before she gets strangled by a space monkey. Lessons from the past that we oh, yep. can all <laughs> pay attention to today. And I get that the professor's supposed to be like, you know, stiff upper lip or whatever, but it comes off as really cold when like they finish burying the girl and he's like, all right, well, let's stop thinking about her. We just got to move on. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that's a wrap on the little girl, right? Let's yeah, all... So. <laughs> All right, and then Roy comes stumbling home. Apparently, falling off that cliff didn't kill him, right? It, it, he, 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 well, it killed him, but he had one line left in him, I guess. So he had to run home and tell him that the alien has Alice. Yeah. And apparently that gives Johnny an idea. It's, it's grab Alice, <laughs> by the way. That's, he's like, I've got a plan. He's like, that's not much of a, not much of a plan at all. I, I really feel like Johnny's just trying to go for a second pass. He's like, okay, well, there <laughs> Alice is out of the picture. Maybe I can uh, you know, make a couple of offers that uh, were previously turned down. That's all I'm saying. So, well, yeah. So the plan ultimately is, you know, we could use me as bait, right? And like, maybe he'll fuck me. Maybe he won't. You know, who knows? But while he's busy with me, you guys could go get Alice. What if we also use Carla as bait? Did we, is she fully... <laughs> <laughs> so buried. Okay, I've got a puppet based scenario I want to pitch you guys, but I <laughs> I need this to be a judgment free zone. So I'm put dollar in the judgment jar for anyone. Mom, you're already crying. Dollar in the judgment jar. So <laughs> you're wasting a body. So we head back to the cave where Roman is is basically presenting Alice with a will you go with me check this box letter. So this is my cave. Uh, bubble machine, the classics. <laughs> do you like <laughs> jazz? Yeah, no, he's very clearly <laughs> into Alice. He's like trying to like he's gra grabbing her hands and trying to put him on his gorilla tits. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I can't take off this helmet; it goes over my entire face. What should happen then? I guess you would do. You something. rub my tummy. <laughs> There's also this great moment because this is supposed to be the cheesecake shot where he, he pulls her shirt off, but she's just wearing like another shirt underneath because it's the <laughs> 1950s. She's got a, a suit of armor underneath. Yeah, yeah exactly. But both characters stop to be like, oh, she'll never work again. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also so and, and right then he gets a phone call on his fucking FaceTime thing. And he's like, oh, I'll have to tie you up. And he starts to put this rope around her and he realizes that he can't tie a knot. I can't do it. With his big ass gorilla costume hand. I'm in a, I'm in a monkey costume. I cannot, absolutely <laughs> cannot do this. So he just knocks her unconscious with a big pound. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Tying you up didn't quite work out. It is the 50s. Karate chop. Very sorry about that. <laughs> And what's amazing is in a second, we're going to come back to her and she's going to be tied up. <laughs> anyway, so first he's got to take his phone call. So he, so he goes to answer the phone and it's the professor and it's mom and it's Johnny and they're offering to turn themselves in. Right. And he's like, can you um, call me back in like, I'm going to say 10 minutes at most. Can you give us, uh, you know what? I'll do it in five. I can do it in five. <laughs> And they're like, no, we can't wait. Meet us at the ravine. And he's like, right, Earth's ravine. I'll meet you at the ravine uh, on Earth. Trying to get to a ravine of my own, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll come kill you guys, and then I'll have sex with your daughter. So, it's more like an intersection of dry rivers now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, he looks back to Alice, and he's like, all right. So, so she's apparently woke up and, and tied herself up during the phone call, I guess. And he's like, all right, so I'm going to fuck you way quicker. And then I'm going to go kill your parents. And damned if he doesn't Ring. get another phone call. Yeah. Fucking robe boss is cock blocking him. And he's like, fuck. Ah, I have to take this. God. At this point, Roman is no longer in a sci-fi horror movie. He is now in like a fucking family sitcom, right? And <laughs> Raymond's brother might as well walk in. I hope you don't mind. I made myself a sandwich, Ray. <laughs> ah! But it's the robe boss. And he's like, hey, man, why haven't you killed the girl yet? He's like, because I'm on the fucking phone with you, you goddamn asshole. <laughs> This is micromanagement. This is my, if there is an HR for our monkey planet, we should have a meeting there afterwards. It's too much. And, and he's like, I don't think you understand how deliciously fuckable Alice is. Could, could, maybe if I put her on the line, he's like, no, 
No, go and kill her and then kill the other humans. God damn it. This movie is almost over. <laughs> so he hangs up and there's this great moment where Roman is like, I must do it, but I cannot. But I must. But I cannot for like three minutes. For so <laughs> long. So much so that I was like, this actor forgot his lines and is vamping, right? Um, but I must. Yeah. But I can't. <laughs> well, this this writer really flexes here. He, he His line is, he's like, at what point on the graph do must and cannot meet? <laughs> it's him getting fancy. How do you calculate that? I wrote in my notes, Heath's version of a love poem. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. Just f of x equals g of x. If like, yeah, if you exactly. could graph those two things and find the intersection point. I don't know if you're referring to a love poem or how to calculate on a graph. Setting those functions so. equal to each other <laughs> so. on the intersection points. That is romantic. It's a weird comment you made. <laughs> Eli. So, okay. So then we cut back to the family arriving at the rendezvous. <laughs> they show up. They're like, okay, Johnny, you're the bait. Here's a gun. Right? Here's the atomic gun from before, apparently. Yeah. Kill yourself. Right when the robot comes over, see if you can... You know when you show someone that Bud Dwyer tape for the first time? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it really throws them off for like a minute and a half. That's what we're expecting <laughs> oh, you to do, no. kiddo. All right? Because he already said no to the old Gawk Gawk 3000, and there's only a, one other way to shock a human to their core. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeez, I had that crazy. idea about Carla, and you guys shot it right down. This is bullshit. No, that would have worked. No. Shoot yourself in the head, Johnny. It's the only way. <laughs> I'm your dad. <laughs> You're like, mine was less problematic. <laughs> so the boss calls him again, right? The boss calls Roman again and says, hey, man, I just said kill Alice. He's like, I'm going to kill Alice. Well, let me go kill the kid first, right? Because Johnny shows up at the cave door basically going, pss, 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 you know, trying to coax him out. Shows now. up like Mae West, just being like, why don't you come up sometime and see me? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like Alice has given you a really hard time. Maybe yeah. you could use some practice. Hey, get the first one out on your good buddy Johnny, and then you'll last longer for Alice. Huh? If I go grab Carla, how does that help? Ah, ah, I, it got vetoed. It's fine. I could do a car. T I can do a car wheel. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> so, yeah, so Roman tells his boss, he's like, I can't kill the girl, but I can kill the fuck out of Johnny. No worries. So he goes to kill. He, he stops along the way. He's, he stops and he apologizes in advance to Alice for killing her brother. So, you know, he cares. Right. Don't be mad at me for killing your brother. OK, I don't want this to be about us. I want you and me to be separate from how I get along with your family. <laughs> so, yeah, so he, he plods away from the cave. Mom and dad sneak in right behind him to free Alice. Right. See, you got to pick a sex plan and stay focused. That's just like basic <laughs> stuff. Right. right. If you learn anything from god awful movies, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> in 2023, let's front load it right here at the top. So okay, so Roman strangles Johnny to death, mm -hmm. and and then uh, fucking Roboss reaches down from the heavens and kills Roman with the lightning powers for all his disobedience, I guess. Yeah, he says, you want to feel like a human? Now you will be a human. But then he just kills him. Right. Like, And by that, I mean dead, like the humans. Huh? Get it? Yeah. And I have to clarify, I'm not exaggerating here. I'm not making a joke. This is what the guy says. If you want to be a human, you will be a human. Also, now there are dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I'll finish <laughs> these people off myself. I'll use this galactic dinosaur gun which will resurrect prehistoric reptiles to murder all the people left. And I'm like, was that an option the whole fucking time? <laughs> it's like an eight-year-old on cocaine writing a movie. <laughs> Just being like, yeah, and now the calcinator ray kills the robot monster, and I bring dinosaurs back because they're yes. cool. I like dinosaurs. And then... Two minutes after bringing dinosaurs back to life, he's like, also, I have this other gun that will just cause the earth to crumble into pieces. And I'm like, well, why did you make fucking dinosaurs then? <laughs> what a cruel <laughs> thing to do to those dinosaurs. Stink those pieces of shit twice. That's right. <laughs> I'm an eight-year-old on cocaine, so I thought of that. <laughs> oh, shit. And just in case you were going to enjoy this bit, we have to watch the baby alligator kill the iguana again. Uh, which is pretty fucked up. It really brings the mood down. I wanted the stegosaurus to like just walk over to Alice and be like, how are you doing? You like, uh, <laughs> cannot catch a break. Like, magic or I do magic. 
Okay, well, that makes no sense because that would obviously charm Alice to the ends of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's starting a fight maybe with me on Maybe you do math for her. I don't know. Maybe you show the play hangs. They, they do some math, math and nerd puzzles. Maybe together. you can learn how to love crosswords for a dinosaur. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then of course the the Earth breaks into pieces, <laughs> and Johnny wakes up. Now here's how poorly written this fucking movie is, right? Like when we last saw Johnny in the real world before the dream sequence started, he was taking a nap, right? So he could just wake up from that nap, but no. Off camera, he did sneak away from that nap and then fell off of something and knocked himself unconscious on something and Roy had to go find him. Is what happened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so it's all a dream. That's what we're learning here, right? Yes. Okay, fine. You sort of. You you do it's all a dream to get out of your shitty writing. But you know how in like Wizard of Oz, Dorothy didn't turn out to be like really into incest and Toto also. <laughs> I have noticed that about Wizard of Oz. One of, of the Oz. many yes. flaws of the movie, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, they fixed it Well, that's here. why they yeah. made Return to Oz actually. So <laughs> yeah. That's a fucked up movie. Have you seen Return to Oz? No, no. I haven't. Terrifying and great. Awesome. All right. So, but yeah, so, but J Johnny's like, oh shit, the whole movie was a dream. Well, that's cheap and terrible. And they're like, sure is. And then mom's like, hey, do you guys want to join us for dinner? I could fuck the professor and my daughter could fuck Roy just like in the dream. And they're like, sure. And they all leave together. But the camera lingers for a little bit longer on the cave. And just then, when you think it's all over, the big fat space gorilla walks out of the cave <laughs> after all. And it wasn't a, a dream. <laughs> So the the kid is prophetic? Is that what we were learning? <laughs> right, yeah. I also, I have to point out that they do the or is there moment literally four times in a row. Yes. Like they show us Roman, <laughs> but then they do that exact same shot three more times. Yes. And yeah. I just pictured them being like, or is there? Or is there? All right, there? Roman, I need you to go like really far across the desert field yeah. to a different spot. And we're going to try the same shot there. Yeah. <laughs> so what what I think was actually good, because I like, I stood here for so long trying to figure out why the fuck they would keep showing that for so long. And what I think was going on here is like, because he's walking right at the camera. And I think they were doing something with the stereo sound to make it sound like he was getting closer. And that was supposed to be a really impressive thing in theaters or something. Okay. I figured it had to be something like that. There had to be an explanation for why the fuck we saw this shot four fucking times in a row. Okay, but I think they are saying that the kid is actually prophetic. Roman is there in the cave or whatever. Yes. If they if they had just showed us the entire movie shot for shot again starting now, <laughs> that would have been my favorite movie of all time. That would be genius. Oh, uh, you can do that yourself though. That, that that's that's a great way to watch this film. Just put it on loop and just like tell your friends, oh, this is a great bad movie and just <laughs> see how long it takes them to figure it out. All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of Robot Monster, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to fall back into this trap. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, gentlemen, we've had our fun. It's back to work with a batshit Christian documentary that people have been chomping at the bit for. This is apparently a request that was first made in our first year of the show. Oh, wow. Here's the bio. Hundreds raised from the dead. Mana appearing in the Pentagon. Gemstones falling from the sky. Teenagers healing perfect strangers on the street. This is an old time religion. This is a new beginning. A spiritual revolution. We'll be watching Finger of God. Huh? I, I have a finger for him. That's a documentary? <laughs> it's a documentary. One of so the listener who so he was like, hey, man, like I, I asked for this years ago. Do me a favor. Just watch the first 10 minutes. And I watched the first 10 minutes and I was like, this is the fucking craziest shit I've ever seen. In awesome. My life. What do they think they're documenting? Is that the apocalypse? <laughs> well, clearly it's a new heaven? beginning, a fucking, spiritual yeah. revolution. It's a, it's a documentary about the future. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so with a spiritual revolution to look forward to, I guess we'll bring episode 385 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review, sharing the show on all various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. 
If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Vivid Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Heath went on to spend way too long thinking about which dinosaur would be the most <coughs> tender lover. It. Noah already knew it was the Ankylosaurus. That's the most really? elaborate tongue. Yeah. Ah, I had Triceratops in my head. Johnny tried not to think too hard about why his dream involved a monster raping his older sister. <laughs> <laughs> right? Morgan, you missed it. Heath met an old man with dementia once and formed his entire personality around that person. <laughs> Not his entire personality, just the clicky parts. Did it cancel some of your ridiculous OnlyFans, Eli? No. <laughs> it cancels I would totally don't subscribe want to, to Dusty Old Video Game Magazine. You absolutely did it, would. Did it cancel the old guy coughs OnlyFans that you have? <laughs> no. Like I said, keeps the ones that I want. Fair. Okay. It does tell Good me product. every month, though. I don't like I still that. endorse It'll it be like, personally. This is how much you spend on OnlyFans. And I'm like, hey, relax. Be cool, Roy- Rocket Money. <laughs> Narc. Narc. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023.